I've been using for this sort of rings um, this notation okay but now I'm going to use a normal notation like uh, ZM or ZN or ZP I'm going to use P when P is prime so all these uh, r uh, rings they are all commutative rings okay but um, if P is prime uh, so this commutative ring it's not only a commutative ring it's also a integral domain okay you can check the previous videos for all this okay so I'm going to switch notation now because this might take a bit long or I might forget and write simply this way okay so when now I write this please remember this is a commutative ring okay and uh, this will be a domain so now we are going to check uh, an example let us say we have uh, this f of r and so this will be all the functions from the reals to the reals okay and we are going to so this is the set of four functions okay that take from real numbers to real numbers and we are going to uh, equip this set with two operations the pointwise addition and pointwise uh, multiplication so so this will be function addition and this will be function multiplication okay uh, adding and multiplying um, pointwise okay so let me first define the operations so if we have an operation a function f and g so f and g will be functions in the set of these functions so if we have f plus g uh, in point let us say point a so point a will be f of a plus g of a uh, and the same for multiplication okay f times g this is going to be a uh, f of a times g of a okay um, please be careful with one thing um, some people are used to fg as function composition so this is not uh, this is not this okay this is function multiplication okay we are multiplying pointwise so I say that this set with these two operations is a commutative ring okay now this is this might take a bit long to check all the axioms for all this uh, I'm just going to sketch and give an idea for some of the, the axioms so we need to check that the addition is associative right so you need to check this okay you get three functions and you have to check that uh, addition is associative then you check that uh, there is an identity okay so there will be a function that will be the identity for this this is easy to to show for this one it's more or less obvious that the function uh, the identity function, uh, identity for addition, is going to be the, the, the constant 
zero function. Okay, so if I add f of x plus g of x, this will be zero plus g of x. So you are going to get g of x, right? So this function here will be the um, um, addition identity. Okay. Then you check inverses and for multiplication. So you check um, associativity and then uh, the um, uh, identity for multiplication obviously is going to be the function, let us say, g1 of x is going to be the constant function 1. So it's very easy to check that this set of functions under these operations, they are a commutative ring. Now the question is, is this set under these operations also a, an integral domain? This is one of those questions that you should really stop the video and try to think if this is an integral domain. Um, so let me remind you what an integral domain here is. You need f of g when you multiply two functions. They can only be zero if f is zero or g is zero, right? If this doesn't happen, you have zero divisors and it's not an integral domain, okay? So in function multiplication, can you multiply two functions and get zero without any of it being zero? Okay, please try to think about it. Okay, let us see. Let us pick two functions. Let us say we have a function here, f of a, that is a for a smaller or equal than zero, and zero for a um, uh, bigger than zero, okay? And let us pick another function, g, let us say g of a, okay? And let us say that this one is the opposite, is um, zero for a smaller than zero, and um, a for a bigger than zero. I, I, should, I should write, I'm going to write, uh, sorry, I'm going to replace all this by x. This has no importance, but for some students this is really terrible. Okay, x here, x, 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 and x. Okay, so f of x is a function x, if x is smaller or 0, and 0, if x is bigger than 0, and g of x is 0 for x smaller or equal to 0, and x for x bigger than 0. Okay, let us try to, uh, to draw the, fun the function here. So, this will be function f, and this will be function g, right? So, x smaller than 0, so it will be this, and then 0, and g will be 0 till 0 here, and then it will be x. Okay? Now, um, if you multiply f times g here, you're going to get 0. Right? But this f is not a function 0, and g is not the function 0 right so we can say that this set under these operations are not an integral domain because we have zero divisors we have elements where the multiplication you get zero and none of the elements are zero